In this video, we will put together a bunch of uh, nodes, a bunch of modeling and selection nodes. There are not too many. And we will create a procedural skyscraper generator with a bunch of windows and so forth. And in the process, uh, we are going to look at uh, the modeling tools used together with selections and uh, how we can uh, make a procedural tool that can be applied to pretty much anything. So I can go and set this to a sphere. I can make my sphere bigger and still I can have all these nice skyscrapers. I can even change the randomization, how many of those I'm going to have and so forth. So without further ado, let's begin with a new scene. Let me bring in a primitive, so primitive, primitive op and a geometry op. And uh, as I showed earlier, you take the geometry output from the primitive, you put it in the geometry in, and you put this here, and we get a cube. Let's make this into a plane. Let's make it 5 by 5 so we don't have too much geometry while we're experimenting. Set this to hidden lines, and we can see everything. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in a random selection. And the random selection is an asset. If you want to see how an asset was made, you select it and you go to the Assets and Edit Asset. You may need to open the attributes because you can't see them in the Attributes Manager. And you can go in and check out how this was made. I've made my own uh, random selection asset as an experiment, uh, so it's not all that difficult to make. You have to wrangle a few arrays around and so forth, but for now this is good enough. So let's continue by taking the geometry and putting it here. And the first thing I want to do is inset the random selection. So let's type inset the extrude inner, that is. I'm going to intercept the wire. You can see that now it creates this. Set it to proportional. Excellent. But I don't want it to happen to all. I want it to happen only to the selection. There you go. Fantastic. Now, the particular asset, the random selection, uh, has a mode to just drive a selection, just like this, a momentary selection. Or what you can do, you can actually put it in the data stream, and this will create an active selection for whatever you're going to do afterwards. So now this is an active selection. It's part of the asset. If you go into the asset, you will see that it has an active selection that drives the output. If you go all the way here, the geometry is driven by an active selection, whether it's a point or a polygon selection. Excellent. So the only little thing with the random selection is, for some reason, the interface in its current form doesn't say points or polygons. I think polygons is the first one, and points is the second one. Anyway, you can go in here and check it out. So we have the inset, the randomization. And uh, let's randomize. Uh, to a low level, a chance of 24%. Uh, this particular one is not very accurate, but it's quite fast. So it won't give you exactly the number from the uh, chance percentage. Uh, it will give you a number close to that. So it's good enough for what we are doing at this point. Now, the next thing I want to do is, uh, since we have this active selection, I want to create my first extrude. So type extrude, and let's put it here and we have our first buildings. Uh, let's uh, grow them a bit. Let's add some randomization to them. That's absolutely fantastic. Now, after this extrude, I want to create another extrude because what I want to do is I want these over here to become windows and the rest to have no windows. So let me just copy and paste this. And I'm going to add this in the stream so we have a second level of extrusion with a different randomization and a different offset. So we have this. So the question now is, how do I go and add windows to these polygons over here? So all the polygons that go around on this level of each skyscraper is going to have windows. So let's take a look at our selections. I'm going to go to my polygon mode. And this will give me feedback about the active selection. And it mostly works with the active selection for now. I want to remind you this is a technology preview, so not all the features are working yet. So let's go and think about this for a second. These polygons here, at which level did we generate them? So when we were at the inset level, so let's go and check this out. So at this level here, we have all these 
polygons. And then we created this extrude, which is just these polygons. So if I take all these polygons and I subtract them from all these polygons, what's going to be left are the polygons that belong to the extrude. And the best way to do that is to go and get all this selection and all this selection and create some sort of subtraction between them. So let's go and uh, pick up a range and I'm going to get a selection range and I'm going to set it to polygons and I'm going to say all the polygons that come from this. Then I'm going to make a copy of this and say now take all the polygons that come from this. And I want to take these and subtract these. And the easiest way to do it is by using the Erase Index. Because we know that selections are index arrays, if I take all this array and I subtract all these numbers, what I'm left with is just the indices, the arrays that contain the polygons that were just generated. So let's go and test that. I should be able to interject a subdivide. So sub divide that will subdivide my geometry let's put it in here you will see that everything is going to be subdivided you can see the active selection actually subdivided but what I'm going to do is go and put this in here and the only ones that are subdivided are the newly generated polygons because I want to do some things to them not just the subdivide I'm going to set this as an active selection so I'm going to press C and type active Sometimes I go here, sometimes I go here. It depends on how I feel about it. So let me go and take this, put the geometry between what I'm trying to connect to create the stream, put these indices here, and now the subdivide is going to be applied to the active selection, so I don't need to connect it anymore. Let's go and see. I can make this two, three, so I can create any number of subdivisions I want to. Excellent. So let's assume that this is uh, good enough for now. I'm going to make them three. And then I'm going to continue by appending an inner extrude, so an inset, inset, to the active selection, set it to proportional, and make it nice and small. I'm going to go close, or not proportional, but we're going to set this to, let's say, one centimeter. It's good to go with proportional because you don't need to keep track on the units and so forth. I'm going to leave it as it is for now, but you can go and change it. I'm going to move on and then append one more extrude to do an extrude inside using a negative number. There you go. So I've created these windows here. Fantastic. So now I want to go back to that selection over here and continue with uh, the extrude I was doing because now we have the active selection which is being applied on the windows. So we need to go and find where those polygons were because I'm going to reactivate that particular selection. And that is the random selection, essentially. So what I'm going to do is uh, grab another active selection, copy and paste. I'm going to put it in the stream and I'm going to go and bring the random selection I did right at the beginning and now I can go and add any other modeling operations I need to the rest of these polygons. Then I'm going to bring in a bevel, fantastic polygon bevel and it's acting on the active selection. Set it to proportional, do this and again I can add randomization here and here and here. Let's add one more polygon bevel just for fun and it's acting on the active selection again and let me make this inset a bit smaller randomization again and all that. So here are my skyscrapers and here is my setup. From this point onwards I can go and uh, change my input primitive and let's uh, use the sphere and let's uh, use an icosahedron and let's make it much bigger and now I have my beautiful skyscrapers on the sphere I can change it to anything I want exahedron which is all little squares and uh, there you have it from this point onwards I can take all these let me go and select them all 
I can group them, right click and group nodes. I'm going to call this skyscraper, enter. And let me just bring everything close to each other. Good, that's excellent. And I can go inside the group and start propagating any parameters, any randomizations, any heights, or anything like that. I'm just going to do a couple of these. So when you can't see an attribute on the node itself, you need to right click and add that input. So I would add all just to have everything here. And I can grab the offset and just propagate it. And uh, I can add the variation and propagate it. Fantastic. So you can do this to any other of the nodes you used. So let's go back. And now we have our skyscraper that has parameters exposed. Fantastic. I think I'm going to expose one more, which is the random chance and seed. So again, add all. Let's take the seed, propagate it, and the chance, and propagate it. And there you go. We have an asset that does one particular thing, and it only took us a few minutes to create. I would advise you watch uh, Chris Schmidt's um, presentation that took place on October the 28th for the 3D Motion Show, and uh, he shows a different way to make uh, a procedural city that has a few more bells and whistles. But the process is very similar.